or uh, <clears throat> hi Eric. Hello. Hi Keith. How are you? Nice to see you. Fine, thank you. <laughs> nice to see it's you. Good nice. to be here. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, finally we're here. Am I number one? You're number one. Actually, when <laughs> I was just pressing uh, on, you're the first one. <laughs> I see guys are joining this. Really awesome. a pleasure. Awesome. 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 Marcy has joined us. Oh, nice. Marcy, how are you? Hello, Marcy. You guys are still joining. How was your day, Eric? Uh, it was good. I... All right. uh, you, you, you're going a bit on and off, and your video is uh, off, unless uh, maybe if you just wanted it to be off. My, my video is off because uh, where I am, it's a, a little bit hot. So ah. I've removed my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Ah, that is good. Masi, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. I'm also as well. How was your day? My day was good. I thank God. Yours? Mine was perfectly good. I see you just joined us. I have not seen you before. Also, Eric, I don't think I've seen you before. Uh, yeah, today's my very first day. Uh, what? Today is my very first day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure. We, we always like to uh, share the word of God in a bit more, in a deeper way, more not, not just like preaching. You see, in, ch in churches, I always say that... Uh, Preaching is a bit more motivational. It makes you, you know, you want to go and do things of God. You're motivated. You feel, you know, you're high and you're like, I want to go and work for God. But now there's something else called Bible study, which is basically teaching you that thing that you've been motivated on. You see, there's a big difference between Bible study and preaching. And that's why we try to concentrate and uh, and get as much as we can from the Bible study because that's where exactly we get to understand the word of God in depth and things like that. And I hope it's going to be a blessing. I see also Joyce has joined us. Hi, Joyce. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Nice, nice, nice to see you. Although you, I'm seeing you only by audio, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm sure, I, I know most people like hearing. Uh, I think we, we wait for people for about um, maybe seven minutes or so. We start exactly at 9, 10. So that also guys can join. I know most of the people take some time. Uh, let me put this, I don't know, is on or off. Let me put on silent. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, my day has been okay. Yesterday, I went for zip lining. It was really amazing. Um, uh, and some other activities here and there. And I really enjoy sometimes like that. You know, you know one very funny thing is that um, people, are, people are used to staying in the cities such that all that you see around you is the, is the creation of men. And is exactly what... You, you see, when you look at tall buildings, you see this is the works of man. Wow, that building is good. That car is good. But I think God necessarily intended us to go and uh, be outside there where we can see rivers and see some trees and we can say, really, there's a God. Because uh, the time you go outside and you go to, you know, out, out there, maybe in some, uh, the forest or somewhere, just go relaxing your mind, you can really tell, wow. That one was made by God. This one, look at that bar, look at those creations. And you see the wonderful works of God. And I think that's why the society nowadays is trying to pull us so much into just being together. You know, we all live in Nairobi and in the cities, but I know if we could really, it could be possible, we could, you know, be out there and also teach our children in the ways of the Lord. 
and I'm sure it will really be an amazing time, but uh, the society really doesn't want that. They want us to be taught in the ways of men and taught in other different ways. And that's how life is, but uh, we pray to God every day and uh, we hope that things will be okay. Maybe anyone who is who has something to say, be as we are waiting for the other guys, you can tell us something. Give us a small testimony. Anyone? Well, um, yep. Can I have a shot? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. All right, all right. Well, um, I'm, I'm currently in Kampala, uh, mm-hmm. so. One of the things that um, I was really reflecting on today is, you know, the kind of um, freedom that we Kenyans have. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically, you have to use a VPN to log into a meeting like this because uh, there's a lot of filter that is going on for internet mm-hmm. um, for the locals. And I was imagining if this was happening in Kenya, how that would feel. And uh, I, I, I begin to thank God for, you know, the, the kind of environment we have back in Kenya because we have those small things that we really don't think through or we don't think that they really matter. But in, in reality, they do. They do. I mean, being able to communicate freely and to speak your mind and your thoughts and you know no one gets offended or you're not arrested or something of the sort it's a it's a great blessing and to me you know it's it's something that i really spoken to my heart today wow 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 that's really it's an eye opener there because we we never really realize what we have until uh, i'm not saying until we lose it but until we see other people struggling to get what we call just, you know, any other thing. Like if you see uh, churches in China and they are praying underground and they I was watching a documentary of these Chinese people and people are basically smuggling in Bibles. <laughs> and here we take them for granted. I was seeing another woman get her Bible and she was crying. And she, she could not imagine she has her own Bible because those guys, they, you know, you read one verse per one verse, you know, it's a page and you've hidden it in between your clothes. What we take for granted here is really a blessing to other people. And I, and I understand, uh, Eric, when you say that, because, you know, God has really favored us as Kenyans and also people in, you know, the countries where there is no war, there is no a lot of Islam because Islam is one religion which will pin you down. But uh, let's just uh, pray to God that people will open up their eyes and they will be able to learn and understand uh, what exactly God talks about uh, in his word. And we'll not only focus on people, we'll focus on his word. Because uh, I've given my testimony over and over so many times and uh, just a briefing. I've been in church for the longest time and never one day did I ever hear the gospel. And uh, I was always afraid, what if Jesus comes today? What if this one happens? What is going to happen? And I was always scared, only to discover that the gospel is basically about trusting in Jesus. It's not about anything that you do. I used to think I'm trusting in a prayer that I did. I'm trusting in some tithing which I gave. I'm trusting in this. I'm trusting in that. But the moment I came to understand what true repentance is, Uh, I said I will definitely make sure that other people know what the gospel is. Because the gospel is not something you can learn within one day. It's something that takes a long time to dissect and to understand. That's why you cannot be able to dissect God in one day. You just put him on a book and then you put him there like on a table. You learn God every day, every day, every day, every day. And uh, I believe today's topic is going to be uh, a real blessing. Uh, I'm speaking about what is the true definition of uh, repentance. So, uh, as we start, maybe Marcy, you can lead us in a word of prayer, please, if you don't mind, and so that we can start our Bible study. The others will join us. Okay, let's pray. All right. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of life that you've given us today. 
We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've given us to dissect your word on repentance for one to repent. As we're going to discuss and um, deliberate on what repentance is on us, we pray for your guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so now um, <clears throat> we're going to go straight away and uh, check exactly what repentance is because repentance is not just a one word word, a one word uh, explanation. It is something that uh, we need to understand in depth because we hear the word repentance very many times. People say, hey, repent, hey, you need to repent, hey, you need to repent. And I'd like to ask uh, a question here. Uh, I won't ask Joyce because we have done <laughs> this together some time back. She knows exactly uh, what I'm asking. But I'll ask, I'll go back to you again, uh, Eric. Let me ask you, uh, when you hear the word repentance, what comes in your mind? Sorry, my, my net is not too good. No, uh, well, when, when you... When you think about repentance, is, um, what comes to my mind is, um, is turning back, is uh, being remorseful, is being able to identify the wrongs that you've done or that has been done to you and saying, uh, I don't want to dwell on this. Uh, I want to reconcile and move forward. I mean, basically... Uh, that's what I would um, so think when, about. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me let me ask. Uh, just still on you. Eh? Now, when you hear repentance, does it does it have anything to do with uh, you know, stop sinning and you know, stop stop doing this sin and you know something else, things like that. Does it have anything to do with stop sinning? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, uh, from my understanding of the scriptures, because um, you see, man, man is born of sin, mm -hmm. and um, um, it's difficult for a man to attain the, the perfection, the righteousness, because the Bible says that the, the righteousness that we have is of Christ, so it's something that He gives us. So, in respect of that. You you really can't say that because you've repented, you're not you're not gonna sin again. Uh, but I think it's a it's it's a call of trying to live a more a more focused life in terms of being aware of the things that make uh, that make you to you know to sin and to be away from from the will of God. Okay, Ma Masi, how do you understand the word repentance? Um. Repentance, uh, to me, basically, is a move, reviewing of your past action. Um, um, past actions, past... Uh, you, 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 you stop uh, your past things, like what you did before, and now you, you, you do something different? Yeah, because I, I normally believe that just like salvation is... Uh, it's a continuous, it's a continuous process. You, you get saved today, you fall short of God's glory, and then tomorrow you, you repent. So to me, repentance is more of a continuous uh, process for any Christian. So when you, when you talk about repentance, sorry to ask because I, I needed to hear and understand something. So what, what are you repenting from? That, that's the word that I want to ask. What exactly are you repenting from? And how are you repenting? That, that's the word. Okay. Repenting basically on um, the things that you did not do right. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, I want to amaze you on something. Yeah? And the reason I ask this, uh, Doreen, welcome. I'm happy to see you. Now, uh, I want to amaze you something which uh, <laughs> I always thought so much that repentance has something to do with sin. But uh, repentance is not about stopping sinning. It's not about you 
uh, stopping some, like let's say you are, you're, you're a liar, you're a, you know, all those kind of things. Repentance mm -hmm. is basically uh, a bit different from the sin aspect. Fine, there's a, when we talk about sin, sin is a very, it's, it's, a, it's a long word because the Bible tells us sin is the transgression of the law. And uh, for it to be there, there has to be a law. So now let me come to good definition and explanation of exactly what repentance is. And I'll give you two words. Uh, repentance. Repentance means change. Changing or turning. And as well, it also means feel sorry. You feel sorry for something. Those are two definitions that uh, we'll be able to see today. Now, the reason I'm saying this, as we go through the Bible study today, you'll be able to understand that repentance basically has nothing to do with stop sinning, but it has all to do with changing or turning, mostly changing your mind or turning your direction, and as well, feeling sorry for something. Okay, now let's go first to Matthew 9.13. Matthew 9.13. I'll go a bit fast because I have so many Bible verses. So if you can, you can read with me. Also, if not, you can write them down and you can go through them a bit later. Uh, Matthew 9.13, it says, But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not, and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So Jesus is saying, I do not come to call sinners. I, I do not come to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Sinners to do what? To change something from who they have been trusting to trusting now the true God, the true Messiah, Jesus Christ. So it has all to do with changing your mind, changing. That's why the Bible says, I will give you a new heart and a new mind. Why are you being given a new heart and a new mind? To think differently from the way you used to think. A Christian sins all the time because we're also in the fleshly body, but we have a new creature in us which cannot sin, which is the soul and the spirit, which has uh, been bought, is, the, is what we call the purchased possession. But the body, the flesh, the flesh sins all the time. Even Apostle Paul in, in uh, the book of uh, Romans uh, 7, he always says that the things that I want to do, I do not. And the things that I don't want to do, it, they are the ones that I do. And he continues and explains that it is not I who does these things, but it is the flesh which does these things. Because my spirit and my soul, the new creature in me, cannot sin, is already purchased by Jesus Christ, and it has been turned. Now, when the Bible tells us to repent, it basically change your mind, says change your mind from the way you used to think or turn your direction from going to hell to going to heaven, from feel sorry about your sin condition and what you've done and understand that, hey, I've been born a sinner. I did so many sinful things when I did not trust Jesus Christ and he died for me and I was just sitting down and I did not understand myself. Now I need to feel sorry for what I've been doing and that feeling of soreness and that feeling gives you a change of mind and a change of heart. And that's why the, the Bible tells us we will be given other new bodies because these bodies will sin over and over again. So when you're saved, it doesn't mean that you will not sin. You will find yourself maybe lying to someone, maybe doing something wrong. But because you have a changed heart and a changed mind, you will find yourself struggling to do sin more than the way you used to do it before. And as the Holy Spirit is inside you, he will direct you towards righteousness. We are told that the Holy Spirit, he convicts us to righteousness. He doesn't condemn us. You see, condemning us is telling us, you're a bad person, you do this, you do this, you're a sinner. No, that's the work of the devil who accuses us every day. But the Holy Spirit convicts us unto righteousness. When you're going to steal, he tells you, why are you going to steal? Come on, why would you steal? Remember Jesus died for you. Remember this and that, okay? So now there's also something else which you call a false repentance. And a false repentance is whereby uh, we, we find people talking about quitting sinning. 
for example, quitting sinning is a false repentance and I'm not advocating for sin. I want to make it so clear that you can be able to get the difference. Now, false repentance, false repentance, number one is quit, quit sinning. This is what we call um, legalism. Have you ever been to these legalist churches where they tell you, hey, brother, we did not see you in church last week. Yeah? Uh, what really happened? I saw you with some people who are drunk. What really happened? You're, you're backsliding. Yeah? You see, you should stop sinning. Stop sinning. Most of them, they say, repent. I, we need you to repent. Basically, what they are saying, these legalists, is that quit sinning which is not true because repentance is basically change of your mind. And when you're taught the wrong kind of repentance, you end up finding yourself, you're always backsliding over and over again. You're saying you're backsliding, but there's nothing like backsliding because once you have the Holy Spirit, he lives in you forever. Ephesians 4.30 says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom, by which you're uh, but do not grieve the Holy Spirit by which you are sealed unto the day of redemption, okay? By which he stays in you. I, let me just read the verse very well. Eh? I'm confusing 1.13 and 1.4.30. Uh, Ephesians 4.30 says, eh? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So if the Holy Spirit is sealed inside you unto the day of redemption, how can you lose him? You cannot lose. Legalists, they tell you, quit sinning. That is legalist. And we have another, this is one extreme. Another extreme is people who say that uh, repentance does not need to be preached. Yeah. Yes. This, uh, these are what we call, uh, these are what we call who? Liberalists. Now, these are people who say, repentance is not for us today. We should not preach about repentance. People don't, don't say about repentance. You see, it's, it's a different thing. These are liberalists. Okay? They talk about that. But we are supposed to rightly divide the word of truth. According to 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You should always be at the middle. You're not a hyper dispensationalist. You're also not a legalist. Those are the people we call, um, they usually call the, the lordship salvationists. They try to tell you if, if Jesus is not lord of everything, then he's not lord at all. If you find yourself you have done something wrong, then you should start it all over again. That's not true because the Bible tells us that Repentance is all about changing your mind and turning to another direction of feeling sorry. Now, I want to explain to you and show you why I've said these words and why I've explained that salvation, I mean, repentance has nothing to, uh, about quitting sinning. It is all about changing your mind. Now, we see so many places in the Bible where God repented. Was God a sinner? God was not a sinner. Why was he repenting? Was he quitting sinning? No, God does not sin. We know that very well. And let's see a couple of verses where God repented. Genesis 6, 6. The book of Genesis 6, 6. It talks about uh, God repenting. Welcome, Pastor Dixon. And uh, I can see a couple of other two, three people. Now, the Bible says in Genesis 6, 6, eh? And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. It repented God that he, he did what? That he had made man on the earth. Now, why was God repenting? Was he quitting sinning? No. Basically, what God was doing, he felt sorry for having created man. Because man... Man's thoughts were continuously evil and evil and evil. He was only thinking about doing wrong things over and over again. And God felt sorry for having created man. That is one definition. Let's go also to Exodus 32. Exodus 32, 14. It will also show us another place where God is repenting. Exodus 32, verse 14. 
the Bible says, and the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. The Lord repented, he, he repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Was God a sinner? No. Why was he repenting? Basically, it means that God changed his mind. He changed his mind and turned from what he wanted to do to doing something different. He wanted to destroy the, the children of Israel because they were, they were continuously doing wrong things in the wilderness. And he wanted to destroy them and start over again uh, from Moses. But what happened? God repented of himself. He changed his mind from what he wanted to do and said, no, I'll not do that. I'll do something different. Let's see also other verses. Judges 2.18. Judges 2.18. Judges 2.18. Um, and the reason I always talk about King James is because most of these things, you, these words, they are removed from most of the other Bibles. Most of these other Bibles, they, they are really re-edited so much that you can, it will be so difficult for you to understand the gospel because they're always diluting things and keywords they don't put in there that's why people really get confused on words like repentance because most of those versions they don't have this word so judges 2 verses 18 it says and when the lord raised them up judges and then the lord was with the uh, and then and the lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge for it repented the lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. It repented the Lord for their groanings. These people were groaning all the time. They were making noise and saying, oh, we don't want this, we want this, we want this, we want this. We want a leader, we don't want this. We... They were always groaning. And it repented God because of their groanings. Was God quitting sinning? No. He felt sorry. God felt sorry for these people. He was like... I really pity these people. If only they knew what plans I have for them, but they can't understand. I feel sorry for them. I hope by now you, you're starting to, to see the picture. Of course, uh, as we go on, uh, just prepare. If you have any question, we, you can ask at the middle, uh, maybe after three, four verses ahead. Let's see also uh, the book of Amos, Amos 7.3. Amos 7, 3, and also verse 6. Uh, Amos, Amos. Mm, where is Amos? Amos is just near Mika, Obadiah, and all those. Amos 7, 3, 7, 3, and also verse 6. The book of Amos 7, 3 says, The Lord repented for this. It shall not be, says the Lord. The Lord repented. Look at that word again. So many verses saying God repenting. And also we can see verse 6. The Lord repented for this. This also shall not be, says the Lord. He changed his mind. He changed his mind from something and said, no, it will not be. Something else will be. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 8.6. I want to show you many, many verses so that it can stick in your mind that for sure repenting has different uh, meaning it doesn't mean quit sinning so that this this ones i'm just explaining to to lay a basing a, a base of today's uh, explanation concerning repentance first we have to what i'm doing right now i'm unlearning most of us what we have learned over the years in most of the you know most of the teachings and most of the churches that repentance is all about quitting sinning so what i'm doing i'm unlearning ourselves concerning that so that now we can plant the true repentance and what repentance is all about so jeremiah 8 6 jeremiah 8 6 it says i hearkened and heard but they spake not all right no man repented him of his wickedness saying what have i done everyone turned to his cause and the as the horse rushes into the battle now these people have been told what they are doing wrong, but they don't want to hear. What they are doing is no man repented of his wickedness. There is not, Jeremiah he is speaking, basically God is speaking and saying, these people, instead of repenting of what they have done, 
everybody is so busy. They are running to their things as a, as a horse runs when it's uh, rushing into battle. They just, you know, the horse just moves. It doesn't want to hear behind or what is happening. These people, instead of repenting, they just wake up and just say, okay, let's continue our things. Instead of repenting means no man felt sorry for what they have done. No man wanted to change his mind. No one wanted to turn his direction into doing what is right or walking in the right, uh, turning to God. They all were going to their own things. Matthew eleven twenty one. 21. Matthew eleven twenty one. 21. 11 verse 21. It says, Woe unto thee, Chorazin, Woe unto thee, Belsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. It's saying, you guys, what has been done here, if it was done in a certain place, those people could have repented. They could have done what? They could have repented. They could have felt sorry in sackcloths. They could have sat down and said, yeah, we have been evil people. We have been doing wrong things. It's like the way we see most of the churches today. People are just going on with their normal things. As long as Sunday, I'll go to church and I'll just pray and I'll sing some worship. And then even most of the pastors in church nowadays, they're just there and they're not telling people the gospel. People are just being told, you see, Moses did this, a blessing of Abraham, blah, 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 all those kind of things. But nobody's being told concerning repentance. You will see Someone who is not a believer, he goes to church over and over again, and not even one day will he ever hear the gospel or will he ever hear about repentance. And that's why you see the Bible was very clear. When I was used to wonder and ask myself, why was the Bible talking about that narrow is the way and few find it? And I could sit down and say, but the churches are really full. You mean all these people are in the narrow way or the large way or and there are some people who understand the truth and those who don't because we are all thinking the same and we're in the same church. And it used to confuse me so much until the day I started understanding that the gospel to most people, what they think is not the, the right way. Most of the people think that the gospel is all about stop doing this, stop doing that, stop doing that. Now you'll go to heaven. No, it is basically about changing your mind, changing your mind, having a new mind on the things that you do. Whom you believed, there's, a, there's a one very thing that I always tell people. And this one, by the end of this lesson today, you're going to understand. If you are a true born-again Christian, and you're, you're with another person who is not a born-again Christian, and both of you go inside a bank, and you start robbing people, and you start shooting people there, and you are shot by one way or another, the police come, and they shoot both of you, and you die. The only difference between you two is that you will go straight to heaven. The other person will not. Why? If it was true repentance, you had repented and you had, uh, you had, um, you had believed the gospel because salvation is about who you have believed. Of course, this cannot happen. I'm just explaining, like giving an example. It's not about what you do. It's basically about who you have believed. The whole argument about salvation, it's about believing, is not about doing. Because if salvation is about what you do, then that's a gospel of works. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, that for by grace you're saved through faith. It is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works. So if you think by me quitting uh, stealing and killing people and doing this and doing that, I am going to heaven then you're lying to yourself. It is all about believing. Who have you believed? And the, the thing which makes a, a true believer have good works and uh, is not able to go stealing, go on fornicating and doing all those things, even if they know we are in liberty, we are in liberty. The Bible tells us, Apostle Paul tells us that we are in liberty right now, but let's use that liberty to doing good. The reason we don't do wrong things is because we have a changed mind and a changed heart and we have believed and the Holy Spirit is inside us and he is able to tell us, why do you do these things? And you have been bought at a price. So, before you go and steal, something is always in your mind. Who is the Holy Spirit telling you, no, don't do that. 
do the right thing. And that's why we are told to walk in the spirit and not to walk in the flesh. And that's where the word repentance comes in. You have changed your mind and you have said, I will follow the Holy Spirit. I will follow the gospel. I will follow Jesus and what he did for me at the cross because I now understand what he has done for me. And of course, later on, I'll, on another teaching, I'll speak about exactly um, your, your state versus your, 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 your it's called what? Uh, your condition right now in Christ and also your condition in the flesh after you've been saved. There are two different conditions. Your flesh is one condition and your and your, your spirit is another condition. The new man is a different condition. And that's why we are told, please walk in the spirit. Don't walk in the flesh. Why? Because these two are clashing within one another. They are clashing. This one wants to do this. This one wants to do that. And the one that you feed is on which is going to grow. Now, let's check again. Matthew 12, 41. Matthew 12, 41. Matthew 12, 41. It says, The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The people of Nineveh, they repented. What did they do? They felt sorry for what they have done and they changed their mind and turned towards God. They said, we'll not believe in our idols, which we've been believing on. We've been doing evil things, believing on these idols. And you see, idol is anything that you put first before God. If it's your social media, that's your idol. If it's uh, your money, that's your idol. If it's your job, if it's, even if it's your children that you put them in the place of God, then that's your idol. Most of the people, they worship different things. They, they say, I rather stay with this thing than follow the word of God. I rather spend all my time there. Where you put your heart, that is where you, your idol is. So if you put your heart in the things of God, every day you're thinking about things of God and you're working out your salvation, you're, you're trying as much as you can to do the things of God, then that's your idol. And that's the right idol, who is God. You adore, you adore God. But if you put your uh, adoration in something else, then the Bible tells you to change your mind. Please move from believing in this thing to believe in the true God, okay? Let's continue. Uh, Revelation 9, 20 to 21. Revelation 20 to 21. 9, 20 to 21. Revelation 9, 20 to 21. It says, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stones and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented uh, they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. These people had put in fornication, theft, murders, idols, and all those things. They had put them first and they focused on them and they forgot the God who created them. And they did not want even to repent, to turn from those things, to turn from those idols, to turn from the things that they, they were doing. They did not want to change their mind and say, we have already sinned. We have already done so much against God. Let us change our mind. Let us change our thoughts and start uh, doing the things of God. And when they don't do that, the Bible says, of course, their end uh, would really be bad. Revelation 16, 9. 16, 9. Uh, Revelation 16, verses 9. And also we'll check verse uh, 16, 11 down there. 9. And the men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And also verse 11, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. So people lack repentance. They, they lacked, they did not even feel sorry. They did not feel sorry for what they have done. They did not feel sorry and say, for sure God has given us all these issues. We now have sores. We now have this and that. The sun is scorching us. They did not even feel sorry and say, God, please, we have known that our mistake is believing in other gods. We should have changed our mind into this and believed in another way. So meanwhile, when we are there, please, if you have any question, just ask me. 
Any question so far so, so that we can see if we are still together? Doreen, what have you understood so far? You can hear me, Doreen? Yes, I can. Yes, so far, what have you understood? We are still going on, but I said, let me give a few minutes to ask a question before maybe someone forgets. I don't have a question, but I'm really learning a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, viewing repentance in the form of uh, changing our mindset and turning, our to turning towards the right direction. Mm -hmm. Mostly I viewed repentance like the way you were saying, like uh, abandoning uh, sin or something of that sort. But uh, about changing the mindset and turning towards the right direction, it makes a lot of sense. Mm. Given, given the fact that uh, even God himself, mm -hmm. sometimes he felt like, I should change my directions to towards doing this instead of doing what I would have what I would have done to cause the Israelites arm. Yeah. Like I didn't know that that is the real and uh, deepest meaning of repentance. Wow! Awesome! Awesome! Joyce, give us a clue of something. What you understanding so far? I know we have done this topic before, but uh, give us a. Uh huh. Um, you can hear me. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, to me, I also had the perception, Samboya repentance. You have to repent of your sins, and like every single time, like when you like do something wrong, you you beat yourself up for it when. In real sense, you can be able to like just change, turn from this direction and start going to this other direction. Mm -hmm. And with the help of God, um, that is actually very possible. So instead of beating myself up, all I have to do is just try and change my perspective. If I was doing something that was causing me to sin, I'll just try and change it and change my perspective and turn the other way. And yes. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Eric, give us your comment. Well, I, I want to agree with what uh, Doreen and Wanja have said. It, it's more about uh, aligning your, your thoughts to, to the mind of God. Um, it, it's not, it's not action-oriented. I mean, it's, it's not work-oriented, as you said. It's, it's mm -hmm. more of shifting your mindset and uh you know making it to be in sync with god and i think for me it's a it's it's a powerful affirmation of of, of what i've known repentance to be all right all right thank you thank you now before i continue uh on the topic there's something that i like to expound a little bit you see in james 2:24 i think it's 224 228 huh? uh there's, a, there's something here which uh, James talks about, and I just want us to go there and check. Uh, 220. Is it 224? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Mm, not 224. There's this. There's this verse, eh? um, I don't know where it is exactly, but it, which says, um, faith without works is, you know, dead. Anyone who knows where the verse is, is in James somewhere there. You can Google search. Uh, faith without works is dead. James 2.17. Yes, James 2.17. Thank you. James 2.17. It says, even so... Uh, even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Now, this verse really confused me back in the days so, so much that I thought it's all about quitting sinning. There has to be some work that you're doing to show that you're really, uh, you're really repenting. And I thought that repentance is a continuous process, which is not. 
you are saved once. The moment you believe, that's it. That's where repentance, uh, I mean salvation comes in. But now, why is James talking about works and faith? It's because of one thing. True repentance has to have works which show after their, uh, their, therefore. If you've been saved, you will definitely have a changed mind. The things that you used to do which are evil, now you will start doing things which are rightful. When I was back in the days when I did not understand salvation, I used to live like the people of the world. I used to go drinking, partying, doing all the evil things that I could ever think. But the moment I changed my mind and I said, it's now God, I've understood. It's now all about him. I've understood clearly why Jesus had to die for me. I have heard the gospel. I have understood the gospel. And then the gospel has come into my heart. That's the moment I had a change of mind. I turned from doing the evil things now and doing the things which are of the world and doing the things which are basically idolizing things. And I started to idolize God. All my life immediately had a change of things. So there was some good works which I had to show after I have been saved. Because the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, um, Ephesians 2, 8, is it Ephesians 2, 8 verses 10? Let's just go there. I want to show you something that people really, yes, we all read this, but we, 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 it's like we jump one of us. We jump the last of us. Ephesians 2, uh, actually Ephesians 2.10. Sorry, I was just saying my things. Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship. No, let's even start from verse 8. For by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Most of us Christians, we read that, especially grace believers, and we say, you see, it's not of works, and then we finish. But the Bible says something else in verse 10. For we are his workmanship created for what? Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has therefore ordained that we should walk in them. He has created us for good works. So the moment we have been saved and sanctified, he changes our minds and gives us the intention of doing good works. The good works now start following us. That's, that's why the Bible says, Faith without good works later on, after you have had the faith, you know, not by works, then if you don't have good works, then your faith was basically dead. It was not a true repentance. I don't know if you have understood that point. If you have true repentance, you will have some good works towards the things of God. If you just repent out of the blues, and that's why there are a lot of false repentances nowadays of Unaskia, you just hear somebody uh, go to a church. The pastor preaches about Moses and the, you know, crossing the Red Sea and blah, blah, blah. A lot of things about the Old Testament. And just general, like things which have not, nothing to do with the gospel. And after he finishes, he comes and says, okay, how many want to receive Jesus in their hearts? No. He calls people there and then he tells them, okay, repeat these words. After you repeat this, then you're saved. Now, my friend, that's a false repentance. Those people will never, ever be saved. They will not change their mind. Why? Because they have not even understood the gospel. The gospel is all about your mind. What have you understood concerning what Jesus did for us? And of course, as we, as we continue... I will tell you exactly what the gospel is. And uh, you see, the reason people have a lot of false repentance is because they have never really understood what Jesus did for them so that they can change their minds. It's not about something that you do. If it's something that you do, personally myself, I was, I was raised in church. I was, uh, uh, I was always a young boy in church, singing in choir, singing, you know, Sunday school, everything. I was even being called sometimes to go and speak to the youths. You know, you just speak to them those church things that you don't even understand and I, I always thought that i'm saved because you know i say that prayer i i say actually i remember very well i've been saved so many times in my life whenever there is a powerful preacher who comes to a church and he says how many want to to receive jesus in their hearts i'm there number one because i want to receive and i go and repeat the same same prayer again and i trusted in that prayer so much until 
Sometimes when I sleep, I feel, wow, that prayer, that prayer. God, did I say that prayer very well? Is there something that I need to add? Did I use the right tone, the right words? Uh, that prayer. You know, I, started, I trusted in a prayer. Until the day I understood that it's not a prayer which says, because if you go, you die today, and you go face to face with Jesus, and he asks you, why do I have to let you in heaven? Will you start telling him, Jesus, you say, you see, I said that prayer. Jesus, you see, I paid tight. You see, Jesus, I help the poor. I build a church. No, it's not of your works. It's not anything that you do. It is basically, Jesus, please allow me into heaven because I trusted in you. I put all my faith in you. I changed my mind and stopped trusting in idols. And I said, I will trust in you because you died for my sins. It's all about you, not about something that I did. But if you believe in the things that you did, you believe I was baptized, you saw I said that prayer. You, you see, the Bible tells us very well in Romans that it is by our mouth that we confess, okay? But now, down there it tells us, but how will we, how will we confess what you have not even heard? How will you confess something that you have not even heard and understood? How will you even, uh, I, I don't want to go to that verse so much because I, I don't want to waste a lot of time, but basically it means there's something that you need to hear first. And once you hear, you understand it. Once you understand it, it moves from your mind to your heart. And this is the reason why the Pharisees, having been the teachers of the law, they were really educated on the, on the law. But Jesus says, unless your righteousness surpasses the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will not, you will not way, in no way see the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the Pharisees, they knew the law, but they never really understood it so that it could move from the head to their hearts. They always just thought and they crammed it. They crammed it, they knew, they could speak everything which Isaiah said, who said, who said, but it was not in their hearts. Until you understand what Jesus really said, only then can you change your mind. Only then can you change your mind. I don't know if you are together up to there. So now, let's continue. Repentance is basically turning from one thing to another. We see in the book of First Samuel 15.29, First Samuel fifteen twenty-nine. First Samuel fifteen twenty-nine. It says, and also the strength of Israel. Now look, the word strength is in capital letters, meaning that is the name of God. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Why is why is Jesus being told he's not a man that he should repent? It means he does not need to turn away from sin because, I mean, to turn away from uh, believing in idols because himself he is God. He does not need to change his mind from the evil things or from what he believes because he is God. He's not like us men who today we are really believing in money. Tomorrow we we'll believe in our politicians. Tomorrow we believe in our in our uh, maybe retirement money. Tomorrow we believe in something else. No, he does not need that because he's not man and he cannot repent. So he does not need to do anything. He does not need to change his mind over anything because he's God. Okay. Uh -huh. Ezekiel 14.6. Ezekiel 14.6. Ezekiel 14, verse 6. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Repent and turn yourself from idols and turn away your faces from all your abomination. Turn, turn, turn. It's all about turning, turning, turning. And I want to go a bit fast. Uh, I have a about 40 minutes or less. Ezekiel 18.30. Ezekiel 18.30. Therefore will I judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgression, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. You see, transgression or sin, sin is the is when you deny the law of God. God has said, do not worship idols. Do not do this. Do not put anything else before me. And you put something else before God, 
then that becomes sin, is a transgression of the law. So he says, don't sin, don't, don't put anything else, don't believe in something else and not believe in God. That's basically what he's meaning. So when you put God first, then you are repenting, you're turning from believing in something and believing in the true God. Acts, the book of Acts 8.22, Acts 8.22. Acts 8.2.2. It says, Repent therefore of this wickedness and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Repent therefore of this wickedness and pray God, if perhaps the thought of your heart, because our thoughts, where our hearts are is where our treasures are. We put our hearts so much in where our treasures are. If we really value something is where we'll put our hearts. So instead of putting our hearts into the things of God, we put in the wrong things. And so we end up doing what is wrong. And that's why we are called sinners because we put our hearts where it's not supposed to be instead of putting our hearts in God. Now, <clears throat> uh, let's check uh, several people here. Who actually preached repentance in the Bible? There are several people who preached repentance in the Bible. And uh, I want us to check just a couple of them. We have John the Baptist. You see, everybody who was uh, in the Bible, he was all preaching about turn from your evil ways. Turn from the evil ways which are being talked about here is the things whereby people are believing in idols and they don't want to change their mind and believe in God. So let's just see a couple of examples from John the Baptist. John the Baptist, Matthew 3, 1. Matthew 3, 1. Matthew 3, verse 1 uh, to 3. John the Baptist is saying, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths strays. Why was he telling people to repent? He was telling them to repent because he was telling them, Please change and turn back to God. Change from what you're believing. Turn back to God. Get back to God. Okay? We also see Jesus talking about uh, the same Jesus in Matthew 4, 17. From, the time, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That is what Jesus was preaching, all about repentance. And as well, we see uh, another verse in Mark 1, 14. Mark 1, 14. Mark 1, verse 14. Uh, yes, Mark 1, 14 to 15. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Turn back to God, believe the gospel. Luke, Luke 13, 3. Luke 13, verse 3. I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Unless you change your mind, you will all perish. Now, we also see the disciples, they're also preaching about repentance. This is now before Jesus died, the disciples, before Jesus died, in the book of Mark 6, uh, Mark 6, 12, Mark, 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 Mark 6, 12. And they went out, who? The disciples. And they went out and preached that men should repent. They went out and preached men should repent. Men should turn to God. And we also see Peter. This is now to the Jews. Immediately after Jesus has died. Now, the Jews have killed Jesus. And uh, Peter is here telling them what they have done. And he's speaking and he's saying, uh, Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent. Okay. So he's saying do what? Change 
your mind or turn to God, turn to God, feel sorry for what you've done, basically. Feel sorry for what you've done. You guys, the Jewish people, you have killed your Messiah. Feel sorry for what you've done. That is exactly what uh, Paul was telling them. I mean, P uh, Peter was telling them. And also in Acts 5.31, we also see the same thing. Acts 5.31, him as God exalted with his right hand to be prince and savior and to give repentance unto Israel and forgive their sins. Why is he giving repentance unto them? Because repentance is he has given them an opportunity to turn to him. God has given opportunity for them to turn to him and to change their minds from what they have been believing or to feel sorry for what they have been doing and turn to God. And as well, we see Acts 8.20. I have so many verses, but I'll read them first and explain a little bit. Uh, Acts 8.20 to 22, it says, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor uh, lot in this matter, for... For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this wickedness and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So Peter is telling that person, repent, change your mind, turn from what you're doing, turn from these things that uh, you have put yourself to believing and you have possessed yourself with and obsess yourself with the things of God. Turn from that, okay? So we also see the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, who, according to the Bible, according to Romans 11, 13, he's our apostle today. And he speaks also about repentance. He also talks about repentance. And in Acts 17, 13, 17, 30, Acts 17, 30, he says, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now I command all men, and the times of this ignorance, God winked at. You know, that time has already gone, the time of ignorance. But now God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. The time of us being ignorant is already over. Now God is commanding all people to repent. God is commanding all people to repent. So Paul started preaching more to the Gentiles and talking to them about coming out from idols. You see, the, the Greeks were full of idols. They were the Greek gods, you know, and uh, they used to worship so many things uh, which are just, were just weird and they, they, they never used to worship the true God. So Paul was too much to the Gentiles and telling them, move from these idols of yours and trust and believe the true God. Okay? We can see also in Acts 26.20, Acts 26.20, 26.20, it says, mm, But should fast unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. That these people should repent and turn to God and do works which are meet for repentance. Now, this one meaning is not that you repent by works, but after you repent, you can be able to do works which are meet repentance. Basically meaning your repentance should produce some good works which show that for sure you've really repented. When you're doing bad things, now you start doing good things. That one will show that you've really, really repented. And also we see a, a certain place where Peter uh, just uh, come from, um, uh, you know, uh, talking to... Cornelius, you know, preaching to Cornelius. And then people are asking, hey, why did you have to go to a Gentile? And Peter says something here in Acts 11, 18. Acts 11, 18. Acts 11, 18. Now, Peter has just told them what happened with him and Cornelius and what really went down and how Cornelius got saved. And he's saying... When they heard these things, in verse 18, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, then God has also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. 
So they're repenting what? From death to life. They were heading to death and now they have turned to life. So they are repenting to life and not focusing on hell and focusing on heaven. That's basically what Peter was telling them, that now the Gentiles can be able to turn from death to life. And as well, we see in Acts 20, 20 to 21, Acts 20, 20 to 21, uh, it says, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have shown you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. So repentance towards God, turning from the idols to turn to God. I'm sure at least by now you're, you're getting the point and you're able to understand the whole aspect of repentance. Let's see a couple of verses as uh, we're winding up. We can also see 2 Corinthians 7.10. 2 Corinthians 7.10. 2 Corinthians 7.10. It says, For godly sorrow, sorrow is what? Feeling sorry. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. So the godly sorrow, feeling sorry in a godly way, worketh repentance to salvation. So this is what, the moment you repent unto salvation, you feel sorry, have the godly sorrow, then you are repenting. You're basically repenting. And the once you repent, then repentance already means that you're gotten saved. Because salvation is all about changing your mind. You've changed from believing this to believing this. And that repentance already gives you salvation. So there's no sal a repentance and then you do something else. No. Repentance by itself means salvation. You have repented. Okay? You have changed your mind. You have believed in God. And that's it. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 1.9. 1 Thessalonians 1.9. 1, 1 Thessalonians 1 verses 9. It says, mm, For they themselves, this is Paul saying, For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve the living and true God. You turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So once you turned from that, you repented. You changed your mind. You felt sorry. And now you are saved. That's how you've done it. In uh, Acts 14, 15. Acts 14, 15. Acts 14, 15. It's, it says, and saying, and saying, sirs, why do ye the, why do you these things? We we also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God. You should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. You turn from these vanities. You turn from vanity. Vanities things that are, are more self, you know, vanity, the things, these things are vain, things which are only centered on yourself, me, 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 me. So you turn from the vanities, the things of that you feel that it is only me, and you turn to the true God. Uh, let's check also Acts 26.15. Acts 26.15. Acts 26.15. 15 to 18. Uh -huh. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest, persecute. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and witness of both these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them, turn again, to turn them from what? 
uh, to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. That is Paul who was talking to King Agrippa. So basically he was telling them that you have to turn from what? From idols to God, from darkness to light, from unbelief to believe, from being lost to being saved, from what you do to what Jesus did. That is what we call the gospel. Stop believing in, I have done this. I am good at this. I am done. Stop believing that God did, did for this. You know, Jesus did this for me. He died for me. He saved me. He helped me. Now, think about what Jesus did for you, not really what you have done. Because when you believe about yourself, that is what we call vanity. Romans 10.3. Romans 10, 3. These are very powerful verse. Romans 10, verse 3. It explains everything to do with salvation, but only very few people really understand this verse. It is talking about you from trusting your own righteousness to trusting the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Romans 10, verses 3. For they, being in, uh, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, these people, they ignored God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So you are not in the righteousness of God. You think that you have left the righteousness of God, which is Christ is in Christ Jesus, and you have created your own righteousness of works then you are away from the true salvation. If you say, what I am doing, I am trying to be a godly person by myself. I'm trying to do this and that. And you forget the righteousness which is in Christ, then that is vanity. 2 Peter 3.9. 2 Peter 3.9. 2 Peter 3.9. 3 verses 9. It says, the Lord, is not the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not slack in, you know, concerning his promise. He has promised us that, hey, guys, I want you to go to heaven. All I need you to do is turn your mind Turn yourselves from the direction you're heading towards hell and turn to heaven. Change your mind from the things that you believed in to believing in the true God. Change, change from unbelief to belief, from darkness to light, from idols to God, from being lost to being saved because he, he doesn't say things which you cannot fulfill. All right. So now, uh, and to the last thing, of which uh, I know this one I've talked several times. How do you repent today? How do you repent today? You repent today by, by doing what? From coming out from the things you do and believing in what Jesus did for you. And what Jesus did for you is what we call the gospel. So when you believe in what Jesus did for you, you change your mind and you turn and you feel sorry for what really happened when you are lost and the times that you've been lost and you say, I want to have a godly sorrow and feel bad for what I've been doing. And now I want to change my mind and believe in what Jesus did for me. That what Jesus did for you, that is what we call the gospel. And the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about what Jesus did. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the Bible says, the Bible says, I don't know if you're there. Let me just open up so that we can go together. It's very easy, very simple, and to understand. It says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received, and wherein you stand by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. That's the gospel. How Christ died for our sins, you understand and you, and you break it down 
And once you break down how Christ died for our sins and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you understand that and you believe and you know that he died for our sins, he dies to set us free. And there's nothing that we could have done by ourselves. We needed to repent and believe repentance. Basically, we needed to believe in what he did for us. That is true repentance, that he died for our sins. He died for our sins, he was buried, he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Once you believe that, then you have repented. You have put forth yourself in a way that you say, God, it was not about me. It was really about you. And I take your righteousness and I don't want to believe in my own righteousness. I want to believe in your own righteousness. And that's the only way you can be able to be saved. So that's basically our message today. Let me start with you, Doreen. Just tell us what you've uh, gotten from the last part and give us your final uh, remark. Doreen, if you can hear me. Mm -hmm. Okay, as you prepare yourself, Joyce, Give us your, your remark, what you've understood from that point. Okay, so me, um, what has stood out for me? Uh, mm, Ebu, Ebu Shikilia, Mike, I can't hear you well. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was saying, for me, the verse that stood out for me is the one in Second Corinthians where it says... Mm, Kumbale, I, I can't hear you well. I, I don't know you're far from the mic. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, now I can get you. Okay, so I was saying, mm -hmm. for me, the verse that stood out is the one in Second Corinthians, where it was saying that um, people have forsaken God's righteousness and mm -hmm. chosen to do their own righteousness, which is something that is common in our daily lives and in most people because sometimes we tend to stray away and like to do things on our own mm -hmm. when since we are not really supposed to try and do anything on our own we're supposed to rely on god's righteousness not what is right in our eyes but what is right in god's eyes so yes all right uh you're going on and off but uh i i think i've understood um what you're saying, especially you are, we trust in God's righteousness, Cindy. Mm. So anyway, thanks for that. I don't know, Doreen, if you can still hear me. Um, if you can hear me, you can give us your comment. You can open the mic. Your your mic is off. So you come and report here, man. Otherwise, um. Since now Nanikama Oingino Potea Potea Moja Moja, we can uh, wind up from there. You can give us a word of prayer as we finish up. Just to put your word of prayer. Oh, let's pray. Oh God, we come before you this evening. I will study that we have just had. Lord, may you help us to what you have to say and what you have put in our hands. And all thanks and honor will be unto you. For it is in Jesus' Christ's name we pray, praying and believing. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a blessed, blessed time. Thanks for the time. See you in the next one. Okay? Okay. Uh, see ya. Bye.